it's Saturday and I didn't do much of anything other than brush my teeth to get ready for the day. So what? still need to eat. We are going to start on a new Meals of the Week video and so tonight I'm going to be making meatball stroganoff. I'm going to put it over egg noodles and I'm just going to show you what I'm doing right now to get that ready. I have some butter melting in my great big cast iron skillet. I have a small onion. I'm going to slice the onion and then I'm going to put that into the skillet with some garlic and we're going to saute that. I should be putting mushrooms in this Pretty much everyone in the world puts mushrooms into their stroganoff, and if I was a good wife, I would probably be doing that. I just don't like mushrooms at all, and so I completely skipped. I just normally skip out on all the mushrooms. And I guess that's probably why Warren sometimes orders a mushroom and Swiss burger if we do go someplace. I just got called out to take pictures of fish, and my garlic got a little dark, but that life is going to go on. So I'm going to put three tablespoons of flour over this and a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so now I'm going to get some milk. Now that all that flour is soaked in, I'm basically making what you would call a roux. And I'm going to get two cups of milk and pour that in slowly, stirring the whole time. All right, honey. Meatball stroganoff. What's meatball stroganoff? It's kind of like meatballs What's in with. My camera wasn't running, but I did just put in just a, a smidge, no more than a half of a teaspoon of this red hot wings sauce. I wanted just, just some sort of hot sauce, is what I was looking for, and this is what I had. Now that this is nice and thick, I put in just a couple tablespoons, is actually probably three tablespoons of sour cream. And I'm going to put in just a tiny bit of this uh, browning sauce, just Ew. because I like the color that it gives it. Um, again, probably gross. about, you think that looks gross, Joe? Yeah. Really? Do you like meatballs? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then I think you're going to like this. <laughs> yeah, I know you like this. Okay, there's the browning sauce. Whoops, I might have put too much in. That was about a half teaspoon. I probably should have just gone a quarter Jeez. teaspoon. Right, Joe? Just a quarter teaspoon? Yeah. Well, I think it looks good now that it's spreading out. <laughs> you want to say hello? Yeah. Look at that hair. How was swimming? Great. Yeah, How, was did good. you fish? No, we didn't. No. Well, you did. Yeah, I caught a ton. Yeah, but I Joe just about, swam. I like, caught six. Okay. Yep. He just swam. And for noodles, I'm using egg noodles and really just as many as you think that your family is going to want. And I'm doing the whole bag because I know everybody loves noodles. The meatballs I'm using tonight are just these from Aldi Original Meatballs. I think they have two flavors there, um, maybe Italian and Original. We tend to get the Original most often. I'm going to stir this around and get this turned back onto low and then put a cover on it and just let it simmer away. Tonight for supper we're having these crispy chicken strips here. I picked these up at Aldi and I just cooked them up. It said 15 to 20 minutes. I went the whole 20 minutes and then some of them I'm going to chop up because we're going to make like crispy chicken salads. So some of these I'm going to chop up a little bit smaller and then we're just serving it on a bed of lettuce. I have some corn, bacon bits, tomatoes, radishes, cheese, sunflower seeds, and some ranch. I think I have some Italian as well if anybody wants. No, I think I have Caesar if anybody wants that. And then I have some grapes. So that is gonna be it for supper tonight. Super quick, super easy, just right for summer evenings. Using our hands yeah, again. Yeah, For supper we are going to be having awesome sauce chicken on the grill I'm also going to make some homemade macaroni and cheese and we're going to do homemade onion rings so Sam has one of those calendars where it gives you like the day by day and kind of like what that day is kind of known for or what silly celebration is on that day yesterday was national onion ring day 
I wanted, I, and I've wanted onion rings since yesterday morning when he told me that. So I'm gonna make some homemade ones because I'm not gonna go to Burger King, which is where I actually like the onion rings from. <laughs> so I'm gonna make some homemade onion rings as well. Here in, for Awesome Sauce Chicken, it is these three dressings, honey mustard, sweet teriyaki, and red hot wing sauce. Those three in basically equal amounts. Hi, Joe. Hey. How are you doing? Good. You gonna strum us a tune on the guitar? Yeah. Okay, play something for us. Hey, what on a song has, um, has, um, cowboy. Cowboy song. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, that was great. All right, so these dressings, um, yeah, you just mix all these. I didn't even mix them first like, like I used to today. I just threw the chicken in here, which is 4.6 pounds of chicken breasts. I sliced those in half this way. As on Jack Oh, that was, that was John Christ? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Another oh, one of his favorite comedians, boy, John Crist. Okay, so I just put all of that dressing in here, which was, I didn't quite have a cup of this or a cup of this. Um, it's just equal amounts. So whatever you think is the amount of marinade that you're going to need for your chicken, that's how much you're going to want to make. So maybe a third a cup, a third a cup, a third a cup, if you don't have much, but I had a lot here. This is 4.6 pounds of chicken. I think I said that already. All right, I'm going to let that marinade, and then I'm going to start in on the onions. I have four onions here. I'm just going to get these uh, peeled and then sliced into about quarter inch rings, place them into a big bowl, and cover them in buttermilk. I don't have actual buttermilk, so I'm just gonna put, mix together some lemon juice with milk, let that kind of curdle up just a little bit, kind of thicken up, and then I'm gonna pour that over top of these and let them just soak for about a half an hour. And I'm gonna stir them every once in a while just to bring the bottom ones up, you know, and get everything so it has some time in that um, like fake buttermilk there <laughs> and then I have my seasoning mixture here this is the breading so I have flour in here a couple cups there's a little sugar some salt of cumin garlic powder cayenne pepper chili powder and I think that's it yeah that's everything I'm gonna get this stirred up and then whisk up a couple eggs with a little bit of water and kind of set up my system Warren's actually setting up outside he came in he's like hey why don't you do this outside so he's getting it all set up to go. Awesome. I'm also making homemade macaroni and cheese to go with supper tonight. So I just am boiling up my elbow macaroni here. I have some shredded cheese. I have a half stick of butter and then I'll probably put in a little milk. I, I never know with the milk if I'm going to put it in or not. It just depends on as I'm stirring it all up how the consistency is. I have everything ready to go out on the patio for the onion rings and just waiting for Warren to get the grill fired up for the chicken. I love the smell of that marinade. Mm -hmm. Kind of spicy. Mm. deep frying, the key really is to making sure that you have your oil hot enough. Sure smells good. Yeah, and you're right. We might have to sit the onion rings right next to where you're sitting, huh? So I can eat them all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we're just going to get set up here. We're having outside supper tonight. <clears throat> There's no... No mosquitoes. Great. And the happiest one about eating outside is right there. <laughs> Great. 
<laughs> All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna eat. We're gonna enjoy this. Oh, and Peter wants me to film his plate tonight because he says he's gonna eat everything. Beautiful, Peter. Yes, that's looking fabulous. So I have had questions from people uh, when we did like, when I kind of talked about money and the kids saving money and things right. like that. This is the type of job that the kids would do that's over and above their just kind of regular everyday household kind of things. And this is the type of job they can do to earn money. So I am going to pay Peter $5, right? He's cleaning, wiping down all the shelves and the drawers and just kind of wiping the bottoms of containers and things like that. He's gonna do that to the fridge and the freezer. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. Uh, I am going to make some, what I call Swiss steak, which a lot of people said is really just steak and gravy. So, cause we don't put any tomatoes in our Swiss steak or any kind of like tomato sauce. I remember my grandma calling it this. So I have here a pack of thick steak venison and I'm just gonna cut them all in half like I did here. And then I'm gonna get these pounded out with flour, dry mustard, salt, pepper, and a whole bunch of steakhouse seasoning. So pounding this, what it really does is just, one, it helps to tenderize the meat and it really gets that flour and seasonings uh, really, um, really set into the meat. I made a complete mess here. That's all right. I'm getting out the great big cast iron. Now, I really can't do this on camera because it gets too spattery, but I am going to put the meat into this nice hot uh, grease and you can see it's starting to smoke so I better make this happen now. A couple tips when you are frying with oil like this. Uh, you want to have a, a thick enough or like a deep enough layer. I probably have I don't know, a little over an eighth of an inch. Yeah, a little over eighth of an inch of oil in there. And then once I put the meat in, I did turn it up again because, you know, it was starting to smoke a little. I didn't want that. So I quick turned it down a bit, got the meat in, and now I turned it back up because I do want that meat to get really, really brown. Let's check it. Okay, that looks great. That's just what I'm going for right there. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this side and then I will do the same, I'll do the same to the remaining seven pieces of meat. I have all the meat in my small, this is just a four quart crock pot and then I have four cups and I use this beef bouillon here and I think I did not quite two tablespoons in four cups. So just about a tablespoon and a half I'll say. And that's four cups of water stirred it up and I'm just going to pour that over and I'm also going to put in a couple bay leaves. And since it is almost two o'clock I'm going to put this on high because I would like to be able to eat probably bet around I want to say around 5 30 tonight. Warren has to fertilize. Is that what he said he was going to do is fertilize Peter? Yes. Yeah so <gasps> Warren needs to fertilize tonight and that has to be done after it calms down and everything so that usually means he Look does it in the evening. Fish. That's a lot of fish that you caught. 
And so yeah, so we want to be able to eat at 5.30 or thereabouts uh, right when he comes in so then he can eat and get back out to work. So Peter has the refrigerator and freezer all cleaned up. It just yes, looks Lord. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what we, he's been wanting to make rhubarb slush all summer. And so I said, you know what? If we have the ingredients, we'll do it right now. So we're getting out some rhubarb. He got some rhubarb and he is gonna put it in that big kettle yes, over there. You. So we're gonna double it. So it's gonna be about 12 cups of rhubarb and eight cups of water. Yes, he's gonna you. put in there and bring it to a boil. This is also a recipe that's in my cookbook. It is on, it's rhubarb slush punch on page five. So that's what he's Bottom. got going. Yep. right page bottom right okay awesome yes I do. so that's what he's doing right there and i when he was cleaning out the fridge we found that i had a pack of vanilla yogurt here it's actually is it vanilla greek yogurt i don't think it matters but anyway i went I to allrecipes.com and i just typed in vanilla yogurt to see what types of things i could find and i found this recipe for rhubarb muffins it gets five stars or all the reviews said to use more rhubarb it only calls for a cup which i never understand when a recipe just calls for like a cup of fruit i always feel like it needs at least double that if not even more that's going to make it a little more wet make you have to bake them for a little bit longer usually but the moisture, I think, just comes through in the final product. What we're gonna do is put the yogurt and some melted butter, oil, and egg into my bowl here, and then we're going to stir in the dry ingredients. Now for the dry ingredients, I'm going to put in one and a third cups of flour, three fourths cup of brown sugar, half teaspoon of baking soda. I absolutely love these. These were sent to me um, by a subscriber. I really appreciate them so much. They have just been yes. so nice. So some of my measuring spoons I've lost already. And what I liked about the ones that I had always had like for so long, and I just got to know the feel when I'd reach in to my drawer. I also just kind of knew it was like you just knew and you just grabbed and now these are so nice because they have the colors so i'm getting to know what what color i need to grab for super super nice a quarter teaspoon of salt we're going to give this a good mix now this recipe does call for somewhat of a streusely type of a top warren is not a big fan of streusel toppings at all i know that just <laughs> if that baffles you it baffles me even more because I think that's what makes a muffin a muffin is that yummy streusel topping. Here's what the batter is looking like so far. This was frozen rhubarb that was sliced very, very thin. I'm not sure who took the time last year to do that. But anyway, um, that is one cup. Now I'm just going to put in a second cup. I'm going to just stir the cinnamon and nutmeg right into the batter here calls for a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and that can be kind of a strong flavor so I'm just going to put a little sprinkle in and then it calls for a half teaspoon of cinnamon. I don't have any sliced almonds like the recipe calls for but on half of them I am going to put some some pecans. I'm gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees. The recipe says 25 minutes. That seems way too long to me for muffins. I usually find that my muffins are done in about 17 minutes. So that's when I'm gonna start checking them. And now it's time to get this all cleaned up because we have a mess. Peter's rhubarb is all cooked up and we have this lined with a piece of cheesecloth. You're just gonna make sure that that stays there and I'm gonna pour it for you, okay? So tell us what you have in here. 
So I have sugar, orange juice, lemon juice, uh, rhubarb juice, and then more water, right? Yeah. Then you stirred it all around. Sometimes it looks a little pinker, I have to say. Sometimes it does because it just kind of depends on the coloring of your rhubarb. If your rhubarb is ours very, was very pink, green. ours was a little bit more on the green side. And so, you know, it really took on the color of the orange juice and the lemonade. But it doesn't really matter what the color is. It is delicious. So what we're going to do, uh, 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 don't be splashing. What we're going to do is go down and... I know I have ice cream pails in a bag down in the basement that I saved just for I this kind this of thing. I think take three. You think three? I'm hoping that we can get this into two ice cream yeah, pails. Let's just, well, let's just bring three. We'll bring three up. On Friday when we have our like 4th of July kind of celebration, we'll bring this out and we'll probably um, serve it with either 7-Up or ginger ale is really good. Um, also club soda if you don't want like really any kind of extra flavoring you just want a little fizz that tastes really good with it as well These muffins are a very uh, moist and very wet muffin, and so I did put them in for the 15, check them, and they needed to go for another three minutes, which put them at 18 minutes. I believe, though, that they could have gotten away with even baking a couple minutes longer, and it wouldn't have affected their moistness or anything like that at all. Uh, I did have one with a little bit of butter on already, like when it was just cool enough to eat. I love muffins when they're at that point with a little butter. And so I had one and I really, really like it. I love that little hint of nutmeg and they actually taste like rhubarb because I put enough in. I'll link to it, it's at allrecipes.com. Um, the only thing that, that I noticed that people were saying is that there just was not enough rhubarb that they couldn't really tell they were rhubarb. So anyway, I think that's important. <laughs> Before I took the cover off of the uh, steak here, it was boiling very, very rapidly. So I just made up a slurry here of water. That's about a half a cup of water and probably a little more than a tablespoon. I'm going to pour this in here. I'm going to start stirring it because I just kind of want that to thicken up the juices in here. I caught you making supper. <laughs> All I'm making is potatoes. You did everything else. <laughs> and it looks like somebody's been eating the muffins. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> did you think they were good? I like them. What do you think of them? Well, I'm Honestly. Not, I'm not saying that I have <laughs> All eaten right. any, but I think they're pretty good. You think so? <laughs> We've got some green beans going over here, and that is going to be uh, supper tonight. What are you finding, Maria? Are you gonna have a piece of broccoli? No, it doesn't. That doesn't oh, count. Oh wow! Maria. Don't eat too much. Maria, that doesn't mm -hmm. count. You said that a long time ago. I think we're gonna have to put a bigger piece. Are yeah, you gonna have some applesauce? Yes. Okay. Then I can eat this. I'm gonna give you more broccoli. Okay, then I'll get a bigger piece. 